Yo, thanks for tuning in to the Aki Network. This time, I'm going to show you how to hack your very own moves into the game. Animation splicing, otherwise known as move hacking, is probably one of the oldest things we've been doing. It's also one of the funnest, easiest to pick up, but at the same time, hardest to master. This is going to cover just basic animation splices, okay? I'm not going to go into moves with pins. I'm not going to go into repeating moves. Repeating moves are moves with a submission animation. Uh, sometimes it's those repeating striking moves you see in the corner. I'm not going to go into those this time. This is just going to be basic animation splicing. In further tutorials, I'm going to show you how to do distance mods, left, right mods, height mods, damage mods, all of that. But we're going to take baby steps, and this is the most crucial step. So with all that being said, there's going to be a few things that you need to know and have ahead of time. First and foremost, download the zip file in the description of this video. It's going to have all the tools you need to create animation splices. As well as that, you're going to need notepad and you're going to have to understand a couple of the terms I'm going to be throwing your way. The main two terms are addies and values. Addies, which is short for addresses, are the location of a function in the game. Now, values are what the addy is currently doing. So this is the addy for the clock. And this is the current digit that the clock is on. And if you watch in the memory in real time, you'll see that the number changes along with the digits in the match. This is all you're really going to need to know. So if I tell you to look for an addy, you're looking for the eight digit number. If I tell you to find a value, you're looking for the four digit number. That's it. Before you load up your ROM, you're going to want to double check in your settings and make sure that the debugger is enabled. This is the tool that's going to allow you to look up addies and values. After you load up the ROM, head to the Smackdown Mall, find the move that you would like to splice into, and hit the F2 button to freeze your emulator. Now, once the animation is frozen at the proper frame, you need to check the memory. So open up the memory in View, and in the address bar, type in player 1's address, which is 8006B454. At the top left, you will see two sets of values, each being four digits each. In this case, it's 3411 and 0060. The first set of values is the move ID. The second set of values is the frame that we're splicing at. Input these values in the tool in the proper cell, as you can see in this video here. Now you have to find player two, and it's the same method. Open up your memory. Type in 8006B514 in the address bar and snag the same set of values. In this case, it's 34120060. Input them in the tool as you can see in the video in front of you. Alright, now that we have the start of the hack finished, we need to do the second part of the animation, and that's selecting the animation that we are splicing into. In this case, I'm splicing into the Tiger Driver, which means I have to freeze it at the frame that I want it to splice in. This seems about perfect, so I'm going to check my memory and search Player 1's address, but instead of taking the two sets of values at the top left, I'm going to take the two sets of values at the top right. In this case, it would be 0094 and 46D2. In that order, I'm going to input them into the cell in the tool included. Now you're going to repeat this process for player 2. At the frame that you want it frozen at, freeze the move, open up the memory, search player 2, which is 8006B514, and grab the same two sets of values at the top right. In this case, it's 0094 and 5936. As you can see to the right, the code is automatically generating itself. Input that code into your emulator by selecting the cheat function. On the right hand side, clicking the black arrow and then installing a new cheat. Select new cheat, input your code, and test it out. As you can see, he performs the Tiger Driver, but the ending of this animation splice is a little weird. This is the second half of making a move hack, which I will explain. Now you're going to need to understand that every single animation splice is a bare minimum of two parts, okay? The first part is the actual animation splice, where you splice one move into the other. 
that is going to be the majority of the move hack. But then there's a second part at the end that trips a lot of people up and they really don't need to. It just hasn't been simply explained. Known as tokies. We call them tokies based off the hacker that discovered them. Tokies are very simple. Tokies tell the game how many frames of animation a move has and it tells the game what the player is doing at the end of the animation. Okay, is he standing? Is he on his knees? Is he on his back gripping his shit? Is he on his face? Uh, that's all it is. And I'm gonna show you how to do it all. So let's just jump right in and get to it. Now in order to determine the frames and the ending animation, we have to know their address in order to write a code. Therefore, open the Toki tool, which is included in the download, input the move value at the top, hit calculate, then copy and paste the Toki 2 line that is generated. Open the Toki 2 notepad and using the search function, search for the address that you found in the Toki tool. Take that line, its value, and the next three lines. The first line is the ending animation for player 1, the second is their frame count, the third is the ending animation for player 2, and the fourth, their frame count. Copy and paste this into your cheat file. Now you can edit the frame counts manually and then update your cheat until you find one that fits the move hack. It does take a little bit of trial and error. For instance, I increase the frames and this happens. As you can see, they are warping. Now you'll see in this glitch how there's all that extra just polygons going crazy and everything. A lot of people will run into that and they think they've done something wrong. You haven't. All this is is the game trying to read information that isn't there. Your animation splice finished before the original animation would have. And since it still has all those extra frames of animation, the game's just reading zero data. So it's going crazy until it hits the frame count. All you gotta do, trim your frame count up and you won't see those, those big exploding polygons anymore. A lot of people run into that and think that they've done something wrong. You haven't. Just fix your frames. Every time. So it's gonna take a bit of trial and error sometimes, but I just kept lowering my frame rate until the warping decreased to the point where it was finally gone. Once it's finally gone, I can move to the second part of ending my move hack. Now you'll see that both the wrestlers aren't quite in uh, a natural position considering the move that they just happened. That's because this is the second part of the move hack I was talking about. We have to change the number of frames and the ending animation. It still thinks that it's trying to do the underhand suplex and knee at the end, not the tiger driver. So all we have to do is find the information for the tiger driver's tokies and just slap those values on the addies for the underhooks. Now that we've designated the frames, we need to find the ending animation for the moves. Instead of doing guesswork, all we have to do is find the move that we spliced into, open up your memory, get the move ID, and search for that move ID in your Toki tool. Now this is going to make it extremely easy, because all you have to do is find the Toki 2s for the move that you spliced into, and then snag the values for the ending animation of player 1 and player 2. Once those values are switched, not only are your frames corrected, but so will the ending animation. As you can see, my Shano Max still had one extra frame of animation that I needed to fix before finally winding up with this very smooth move hack. And that's all you have to do to make a basic animation splice. Now with that, you have everything you need to start making basic move hacks. It really is that simple and you really can have them done that fast. Some are more complicated than others, some are easier than others. If you need to find tutorials for something that we haven't covered yet, make sure that you check out AKI Live, Next Wave 64, the No Mercy Library, or Gen Hacks because they all have a wealth of tutorials and resources for things that you can use and add that weren't covered in this video. There will be more tutorials coming for more advanced techniques in move hacking and just hacking in general. So thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. And hey, no mercy rules. <laughs>